Welcome to Firearms. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not gonna look at you. <laughs> Welcome to Firearms of America. Today, as you guys can see, I have another Glock for review. And this is Glock 26 chambered in 9mm. So, let's do some shooting and see what I can do. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Glocks, which, I mean, who is not, right? Austrian brand, originally, developed by a firearms manufacturer, well, not really firearms manufacturer, initially curtain rod manufacturer, Glock Gaston. Yes, like Beauty and the Beast. And, like I said, initially Glock Gaston was a curtain rod manufacturer until he decided to get into the firearms. And because of his extensive experience in developing things from polymer, he developed this polymer frame pistol. So what can I say about it? Let's start with the magazine. This particular one comes with a 15 capacity magazine, which is very impressive for this compact size of a gun, which is uh, kind of very interesting because just last week I have been reviewing this Hellcat from Springfield. It was also chambered in nine millimeter and it claimed that it was the most capacity magazine compact gun well guys this is a glock generation 3 26 has been around for a while and uh it's two more than hellcat so keep that in mind anyway let's see i got eight nine now um the magazines from glock they're i think some of the best magazines they're very easy to load and as you can see they're very nicely numbered so let's do some shooting this is only a 3.4 inch barrel let's see how it can handle the recoil from a nine millimeter round and i'll try to get uh, how about that orange top circle right there on the top oh, close. Close. Ah, there you go That was bullseye. Not bad. Wow. All right. So, interestingly, considering this is only 3.4 inch barrel, it handles the recoil very, very well. There are a few, a few factors that contribute, right? First of all, we have a very tight slide. So you already know that the spring on a guide rod is pretty tough. So keep that in mind if you're one of those people that have mm, soft hands and you don't want to deal with a heavier racking slide, might not be a pistol for you, but I'm going to put a few more rounds through it and then we will talk a little bit about the features. Now. One thing I wanted to mention here is the grip. Obviously, because it's a compact size pistol. And if you are using a standard magazine that this pistol comes with, which is a 10 capacity, not extended 15 capacity like this one, you don't really have that extra space that I do have right now for the pinky, right? Because that's, that's really all you're getting. So not a lot. Might be a little bit harder to handle that kickback from the recoil. Keep that in mind. So I always say, whenever, whenever you have a compact pistol and you have a variety of different magazines, right? Extended ones, not extended ones. Try to practice with the magazine that you're planning to carry with. If you're planning to carry this pistol with a tank capacity, practice with it so that you can feel because the recoil is going to be different. Keep that in mind. All right, let's see. Seven rounds. Let's make it eight rounds. My lucky number. Do some more shooting. And then we'll go back to the grip, the trigger, and everything else. All right, so let's finish up that orange. I 
like it a lot. You can be pretty accurate with it. Even if you are not good as I am. So, now as you can see the grip, and one of the things that I wanted to point out whenever it comes to blocks, is the difference in generation is the grip, right? So this is a clear generation three grip, which I honestly like a little bit more than the generation four. Generation four has more aggression to it. However, whenever it comes to the pattern on the grip, I am more attracted to this one, the gen generation three. So it's, a, it's a little bit, a little bit nicer to handle. However, in this situation, I think generation four grip would do a little bit better just because it's a compact gun and you kind of do need more aggression in the grip to handle that recoil a little bit better. Now, let's go to the trigger. The trigger is a little bit heavier on this particular model of a Glock. It's actually 28. Um, so as you can see, you do have your standard Glock safety, kind of this pre-trigger that kind of allows you to feel the trigger before you actually have your finger on the trigger. And then we do have probably about two and a half millimeter of safe travel, familiar travel. And then probably about two millimeters of unsure travel and the crisp snap. So pretty good tr trigger overall. You do have some serrations here on the trigger guard that I think pretty good, especially in this case, because it's compact, allows you to have a little bit of a different grip, a little bit more. And I'm gonna put just a few more rounds through it and we'll try to come up with a reasonable, more or less, conclusion. Now, one thing I kind of wish I saw on this particular pistol is a front rail here. It would be nice, you know, especially for a compact. If you want to have a laser, if you want to have a flashlight, which you most of the times get on Glocks, but not on this one. Keep that in mind. Now, of course, your sights, standard three dot, not really three dot, but whatever that bar is for the Glock, which most of the Glocks, they come with this uh, rear side. Honestly, I was not a huge fan of this in the beginning, but it kind of grew on me, getting better with it. So, put five more rounds through this pistol, and we will do some conclusions. Conclusions here. All right. And well, since we're doing that orange, let's just keep doing that orange. All right, now it is definitely finished. And I can be proud of myself for the rest of the day. You probably already noticed the serrations on the back of the slide, nothing on the front, which I mean, I do like not as much of the area to have your regular racking grip on the slide not a big deal pretty intuitive however obviously you know glocks they don't have any kind of additional external safety besides the their trigger safety system um, the slide release as you can see it's uh not ambidextrous keep that in mind you do have external extractor you do have your reversible, which I don't really understand the point of having a reversible mag release on the Glock because the slide release is not ambidextrous, so you reverse the mag release is still, still not appropriate for a lefty, keep in mind. But, but, one of the things that I wanted to point out in this particular model of a Glock is that the magazine release is a little bit uh, finicky in a way because whenever it comes to the grip here if you're trying to release it with just your thumb standard like this right like you would normally do because the area the other where the reversible side right of the magazine release on this side sits flush against your fingers here might get a little bit of uh, getting stuck problem. Just a little bit. Keep that in mind. But overall, I am definitely very happy with the gun. 
I think it's a fantastic option whenever it comes to a concealed carry. If you want a concealed carry, um, nine millimeter chambered gun, I think this is a fantastic option, especially considering that this one accommodates 15 capacity magazine and there are so many different varieties for this particular gun. For example, you can have it in standard 10, you can have it in 12, in 17, 19, 15, which is this one, 24, 31, and 33. So your, your options are practically limitless here. And in fact, I do have, interestingly, a 33 <laughs> capacity magazine. And uh, yeah, it looks, uh, doesn't look too bad. It's actually uh, just uh, for fun, shoot around with this magazine. See how it uh, does. Oh, I actually like the grip. Unique. And it works. So, as usually, not uh, disappointed in another Glock pistol. Good job, Glock. You're so funny. Yeah.